Uh, and I want to stress, Carnegie Mellon is the only place in the world that the ETC could have happened, by far, the only place. Uh, so, <laughs> okay, this picture was Don's idea, okay? Uh, and we like to refer to this picture as uh, Don Marinelli on guitar and Randy Pausch on keyboards. <laughs> But we really did play up the left brain, right brain, and it worked out really well that way. Um, uh, Don is an intense guy. <laughs> and Don and I shared an office. And at first it was a small office. We shared an office for six years. Right? Now, those of you who know Don know he's an intense guy. Right? And uh, you know, given my current condition, somebody was asking me, uh, this is a terrible joke, but I'm going to use it anyway. Because uh, I know Don will forgive me. Uh, somebody said, given your current condition, have you thought about whether you're going to go to heaven or hell? And I said, I don't know, but if I'm going to hell, I'm due six years for time served. But uh, <laughs> I kid. Sharing an office with Don was really like sharing an office with a tornado. Right? There was just so much energy, and you never knew which trailer was next. Right? <laughs> but you knew something exciting was going to happen. And, and there was so much energy. And I do believe in, in giving credit where credit is due. So in my typically visual way, right, uh, if Don and I were to split the success for the ETC, he clearly gets the lion's share of it. He did the lion's share of the work. Okay? He had the lion's share of the ideas. It was a great teamwork. I think it was a, a great yin and a yang, but it was more like yin and yang. Right? Uh, and he deserves that credit, and I, and I give it to him because the, the ETC is a wonderful place. And uh, you know, he's now running it, and he's taking it global. We'll talk about that in a second. Describing the ETC is really hard, and I finally found a metaphor. Telling people about the ETC is like describing Cirque du Soleil if they'd never seen it. Sooner or later, you're going to make the mistake. You're going to say, well, it's like a circus. And then you're dragged into this conversation about, oh, how many tigers, how many lions? Right? How many trapeze acts? And that misses the whole point. So when we say we're a master's degree, we're really not like any master's degree you've ever seen. Here's the curriculum. Uh, the curriculum ended up looking like this. All I want to do is visually communicate to you that you do five projects in building virtual worlds, then you do three more. All of your time is spent in small teams making stuff. None of that book learning thing. Don and I have no patience for the book learning thing. It's a master's degree. They already spent four years doing book learning. Right? By now, they should have read all the books. Uh, the keys to the success were that Carnegie Mellon gave us the reins, completely gave us the reins. We had no deans to report to. We reported directly to the provost, which is great because the provost is way too busy to watch you carefully. <laughs> uh, we were given explicit license to break the mold. It was all project-based. It was intense. It was fun. And we took field trips. Every spring, uh, spring semester in January, we'd take all 50 students in the first year class and we'd take them out to shots at Pixar. We'd take them to Pixar, Industrial Light and Magic. And of course, when you've got guys like Tommy there acting as host, right, it's pretty easy to get entree to these places. So uh, we did things very, very differently. The kind of project students would do, we did a lot of what we'd call edutainment. Uh, we developed a bunch of things with the Fire Department of New York, a network simulator for training firefighters, using video game-ish type technology to teach people useful things. That's not bad. Companies did this strange thing. They put in writing, we promise to hire your students. Uh, I've got the EA and Activision ones here. I think there are now, how many, five? I, 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 I drew nose, I bet. Uh, so there are five written agreements. I don't know of any other school that has this kind of written agreement with any company. And so that's a real statement. And these are multiple year things. So they're agreeing to hire people for summer internships that we have not admitted yet. That's a pretty strong statement about the quality of the program. Uh, and Don, as I said, he's now, he's, he's crazy. And, you know, I mean that in, in a wonderful complimentary way. He's doing these things where I'm like, oh my God. You know, he's, he's not here tonight because he's in Singapore because there's going to be an ETC campus in Singapore. There's already one in Australia and there's going to be one in Korea. So this is becoming a global phenomenon. So I think this really speaks volumes about all the other universities. It's really true that Carnegie Mellon is the only university that can do this. We just have to do it all over the world now. <laughs> okay. uh, one of the big success about the ETC is teaching people about focus. Oh, now I hear the nervous laughter from the students. <laughs> <laughs> I had forgotten the delayed shock therapy effect of these bar charts. Um, 
when you're taking building virtual worlds, every two weeks we get peer feedback. We put that all into a big spreadsheet. And at the end of the semester, you've had three teammates per project, five projects. That's 15 data points. That's statistically valid. And you get a bar chart telling you uh, on a ranking of how easy you are to work with where you stack up against your peers. Boy, that's hard feedback to ignore. Some still managed, but... Uh, <laughs> But for the most part, people looked at that and went, wow, I, I got I to gotta pick it up a notch. I better start thinking about what I'm saying to people in these meetings. And that is the best, best gift an educator can give, is to get somebody to become self-reflective. So the ETC was wonderful. But even the ETC, and even as Don scales it around the globe, it's still very labor intensive. You know, It's not Tommy one at a time. It's not a research group 10 at a time. It's 50 or 100 at a time per campus times four campuses. But I wanted something infinitely scalable, right? Scalable to the point where millions or tens of millions of people could chase their dreams with something. And you know, I guess that kind of a goal really does make me the Mad Hatter. <laughs> so Alice uh, is a project that we've worked on for a long, long time. It's a novel way to teach computer programming. Kids make movies and games. The head fake. Again, we're back to the head fakes. Best way to teach somebody something is to have them think they're learning something else. Right? I've done it my whole career. And the head fake here is that they're learning to program, but they just think they're making movies and video games. This thing has already been downloaded well over a million times. There are eight textbooks that have been written about it. 10% of US colleges are using it now. And it's not the good stuff yet. The good stuff is coming in the next version. Okay? Uh, I, like Moses, get to see the promised land, but I won't get to set foot in it. And that's OK because I can see it. And the vision is clear. Millions of kids having fun while learning something hard. That's pretty cool. I can deal with that as a legacy. The next version is going to come out in 2008. It's going to be teaching the Java language if you want them to know they're learning Java. Otherwise, they'll just think that they're writing movie scripts. Uh, and uh, we're getting the characters from the, P the, the best-selling PC game in history, The Sims. And this is all already working in the lab. So there's no real technological risk. I don't have time to thank and mention everybody in the Alice team, but I just want to say that Dennis Cosgrove is going to be building this, has been building this. He is the designer. It's his baby. And uh, for those of you who are wondering, well, you know, in some number of months, who should I be emailing about the Alice project? Where's Wanda Dan? Oh, there you are. Stand up. Let them all see you. Everybody say, hi, Wanda. Hi. Send her the email. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about Caitlin Kelleher, but she's graduated with her PhD and is at Washington University, and she's going to be taking this up a notch and going to middle schools with it. So grand vision, and uh, you know, to the extent that you can live on in something, I will live on in Alice. All right, so now the third part of the talk, lessons learned. You know, we've talked about my dreams. We've talked about helping other people enable their dreams. Somewhere along the way, there's got to be some aspect of what lets you get to achieve your dreams. First one is the role of parents, mentors, and students. I was blessed to have been born to two incredible people. This is my mother on her 70th birthday. <laughs> I am back here. I have just been lapped. <laughs> this is my dad riding a roller coaster on his 80th birthday. Um, and he points out that you know, he's not only brave, he's talented because he did win that big bear the same day. Uh, my dad was so full of life. Uh, anything with him was an adventure. I don't know what's in that bag, but I know it's cool. <laughs> uh, my dad dressed up as Santa Claus, but he also did very, very significant things to help lots of people. Uh, this is a dormitory in Thailand that my mom and dad underwrote. And every year, about uh, 30 students get to go to school who wouldn't have otherwise. This is something my wife and I have also been involved in heavily. And these are the kind of things that I think everybody ought to be doing, helping others. Uh, but the best story I have about my dad is, unfortunately, my dad passed away a little over a year ago. And when we were going through his things, he had fought in World War II in the Battle of the Bulge. And when we were going through his things, we found out he had been awarded the Bronze Star for Valor. My mom didn't know it. In 50 years of marriage, it had just never come up. 